It's Kelly Field for the big show with the longest flying line in the world. It's Kelly Field for the finale. The Black Mariah arrives and quickly unloads these young pilots to their assigned sections. While the cadets are drawing their equipment, Captain Hubby and his instructors in Section 1 take down their assigned students in preparation for the next 10 weeks' work. Drill and rifles are things of the past. It's flying now and more flying. This sweet little advanced trainer had a pursuit ship for its father. It's a honey. Captain Hubby shows the four young pilots the latest mechanisms on this advanced trainer. It has automatic flaps, retractable landing gear, controllable pitch propeller. With the motor off, they are being worked by hand. In the air, they are mechanically worked. This is the real thing of fighting plane. <laughs> Lieutenant Blanchard, their instructor, gives each a quick check ride to test them on the working of these new controls. Doc, boy, that was close. It's a new adventure, this advanced trainer. Fast, easy to handle, glass-enclosed cockpit, cockpit heater. Yes, so help us, a heated cabin, radio, in fact, all the comforts of home. Formation flying comes next, three ships at first, with the cadet flying wing position. Lieutenant Blanchard explains the procedure with models. Formation flying is a true test for a military pilot. Physical and mental coordination is constantly being used, giving it the gun at the proper time, using stick and rudder to stick in tight. It's a thrill of a true aviator to be able to fly a formation with his brother pilot. It calls for teamwork, confidence in each other. This is why ground discipline means air discipline. This is the making of a fighting pilot, to fly in a fighting formation, and how these young pilots love this assignment. The Link Trainer, the Jeep by nickname, teaches the cadet to fly on instruments without outside visual reference. At first, it is all very bewildering, and the pilot sometimes becomes a little dizzy. Eh, hey, Bill? But with proper instruction and practice, movements are smoothed out, and Bill handles it like the veteran he is becoming. They even fly the beam. After practicing on the Jeep, Lieutenant Blanchard and Bill take to the air. Bill pulls the hood over his cockpit and simulates instrument flying. The check ride, three ship formation, link trainer, instrument fly. Now it's six ship formation, a fighting formation of importance. It's training that the true pilot loves because it's flying in all its glory. Rolling forward as each pilot gives his speed the gun, these six balls of dynamite quickly take to the air. Wheels are retracted, propellers set for cruising. This is real flying, precise, accurate, and beautiful. Wouldn't you like to be flying one of those babies? Boy, I don't blame you. This is something. is literally flying by. Wings are on the horizon. Wings with a lieutenant's uniform that will pay them $205 or $245 a month. Five hundred requests landing authority. Okay, five hundred. Field clear. Wheels down. Okay. So the control tower okays text for a landing. 
We'll drop. Look. Don't land. My wheels. Boy, that was a close call. Have Cadet Myers report to me at once. Trouble protects, but it demonstrates how modern control towers and two-way radios prevent accidents both to ship and pilot. Flying Cadet Myers, we have decided to decorate you. With disregard for your own safety, and at the risk of wrecking one good airplane, it behooves us to give you the dumbbell croix de gear. Cross-country flying, it is now individual cross-countries, so from theoretical classroom work, they go to the practical. Using a scale map, they draw their course, make compass and windage corrections, and estimate time of arrival. They take off at five-minute intervals. Each student with a set of maps stands by for the takeoff. It's Kelly Field to Dallas, Texas. They have dinner at Dallas and return at night. Dallas to Kelly. 300 miles of night flying with a canopy of stars overhead and the friendly beacon light throwing out signals of assurance. These flights make for stronger character and give added assurance that the Air Corps, with its rigid code of honor, duty, and country, is the finest in the world. Skeet shooting. Within a few weeks, these young pilots will start aerial gunnery. Skeet shooting is used as a foundation for training aerial gunners. More cross country, this time to Brownsville, Texas. Bob disagrees with these other pilots. The ship starts departing at 2. Bob Gordon has been assigned to 100. Now let's see. Doggone, I've lost it. Then doggone, brother, we believe you are lost. Destination, Brownsville, Texas on the Rio Grande. As each cadet arrives at Brownsville, he parks his ship and reports in to the proper authority. All ships seem to be in, but time staggers on. Senor Mexico doing border patrol. Where am I at? No, no, senor. At least he is not in Mexico, even if lost. Since time has staggered by, Bob staggers in. A very chastened young pilot, and I imagine this officer is not commending him for getting lost. Thirty weeks are nearly over. Uniforms are bought, and you can't blame Tex for clowning. It soon means tactical units, wings, and increase in pay. The start of a big day, and with the stars and stripes in the background, the oath of allegiance is solemnly given to this group. Thirty weeks ago, coming from all walks of life, these several hundred young junior officers go through the formality of receiving their certificate of graduation a reserve commission, and the greatest emblem in the world to them, a pair of Uncle Sam's wings. Their wings have grown strong. Mothers, fathers, sweethearts, sisters and brothers, all are present. And our four cadets seem to be doing all right. But break it up, boys. Lieutenant Blanchard, your proud instructor, likewise wants to congratulate you on this Memorial Day. Four young Americans eager, alert, and sincere, who during these past months have learned a new profession, as well as having adopted the principles of the service for their own use. The last parade, it's the big parade, Memorial Day. And when the time comes for them to fly down past the long line at Kelly Field, each of these young officers inwardly salutes the greatest flying school in the world. They are departing as men, men with wings, men with a purpose. These are the fighting men of the United States Army Air Force.
is over. These young officer pilots will become the air veterans of tomorrow, and they salute you who are about to follow in their footsteps and wish you a happy land.